Okay, so uh, welcome again to the Gallup seminar. Uh, so today we have a uh, Ramke Klosterman from University of Padova, uh, who is going to talk about Hodge loci of linear combinations of linear subvarieties. So, thank, you. thank you, thank you, Roberto. Thank you, Jose, for the invitation. Um, so today we'll talk about uh, basically the following setup. So you take a smooth hypervarus, and now you're going to look to the for Hodge classes in a primitive cohomology. And I'm going to assume that the, the dimension of this of this uh, Q vector space is at least two. So there are, besides the the hyperplane class, there are two further uh, linearly independent Hodge classes. And what you want to do is to compare the locus where both these classes remain hot classes and the locus where um, a combination of them is a hot class. Uh, and then mostly uh, in the case where both uh, where both starting hot classes are, are special, where the, 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 the hot, those hot classes those I, uh, have very small color dimension. Also, I will. Um, so I'm in number theorist by training who moved to algebraic geometry. So I will spend most of the time on, on the algebraic geometry aspects. Um, Jose probably has talked about other mot uh, motivations to, to study these things. Um, so I, I will do mostly the, the algebra part. Good. Um, I will now explain in detail a little bit what I wrote here on, on, on the slide. So some of you might already know everything what I'm going to say. Uh, so I will fix integers D and K. D is always the degree of the hypersurface. K is half the dimension. Uh, everything has even dimension in this talk, so uh, uh, I've always said K half the dimension. And I assume that the degree is at least 2 plus 2 over K. I will explain in a minute why. Um, so X will always be the hypersurface, D is the degree. And we want uh, to exclude hyperplanes, uh, quadrics. And we want to exclude cubic surfaces because there's no, they do not admit a variation of hot structures, so there's nothing interesting to tell about them. Uh, so I will always assume that they are not in, that, in, in one of these cases. Okay. Um, so smooth hypersurfaces, they have, don't have so much cohomology, so everything outside the middle dimension is, is not interesting. It's either in zero or it's in self intersection of the hyperplane class. However, the minimal cohomology is more, it's more interesting. Uh, you get one substructure because of the hyperplane class, and then there's a complementary vector space, uh, which you can give different names. So I will write down this as, as the primitive cohomology. Some people call it the finishing cohomology. Uh, but you can have this decomposition. It, it's orthogonal with respect to the, to the cut product. Um, and now you can look for hot classes. So hot classes are uh, for this talk, they are Q classes, uh, which are also of type, type KK. So they are uh, a, multi a multiple of the a multiple of the classes is also in C, and then then the Hodge conjecture should say here um, that such a class is a Q linear combination of cycle classes. And in the rest of this talk, this, this, this Hodge conjecture doesn't play a role. I'm just going to study the Hodge classes. Um, yeah, and I almost mostly focus on only on the primitive classes. So we have always one hot class uh, coming from the self intersection of the hyperplane. Uh, I forget about this, and I'm I'm looking for for classes that are independent of that one. Good. Now, for general hypersurface, it's very boring again because a general hypersurface has an irreducible hot structure on the primitive cohomology, so you cannot have hot classes. Uh, and now we're going to look to the those hypersurfaces that have at least one extra hot class. Um, this is called the hot locus, except if you're working for surfaces, then it's called the Nautilus locus. The Nautilus locus, um, and the hot locus is a, is a proper a proper locus inside the the. So, so it's not, not everything inside the, the smooth hypersurfaces. Uh, for K is 1, it goes by the neutral Lesch's theorem. Um, how we prove nowadays the neutral Lesch's theorem, we'll also prove it for any K. 
Um, so I think that's it. That's it where it where, where starts. How does this hot logos look like? Um, it's a countable union of of analytic sub varieties. So it's um, it's it's not a variety by itself. It's it's parameterized by some some infinite set. Essentially, it's parameterized by rays in the, in the in the primitive cohomology where you just ask for one ray to remain of type KK. Um, but can you say more about this? Yeah. So several of the of those rays coincide. So it's not really parameterized by this space, but it's close to 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 being parameterized by the the primitive cohomology. Something which is much harder to show is that it's actually a union of countably many algebraic varieties. So all the reducible components are not only analytic; they are really algebraic. Again, we will not use this fact, but it's, it's, it's useful to know. And um, how does the hot locus look like, like locally? Um, so you pick a non-zero hot class. Then you can uh, take a simply connected neighborhood of that, that hot class, of the, of the hypersurface. Now you can look to all hypersurfaces in, in the neighborhood where the, this, this class remains of hot type. And um, in a simply connected neighborhood, you can just uh, do this because uh, you have a natural isomorphism between the, the Q commodities. So there's a print missing in the second one, I'm sorry. Um, so it gives you an isomorphism of Q factor spaces, but it does not respect the hot structure. Uh, and so you can transport your gamma from X to, 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 to the commodity of, of X prime. Um, and then you can just check whether it remains of type KK, yes or no, and this defines your logos. Okay. Now, if you take an unreducible an component of the host locus, and you take um, you take an X sufficiently general on these components, then you can find a small neighborhood where the intersection of, of the, the component with the hue is precisely such a such an N gamma. Okay, so um, however, so one of the things we, we will show later on, um, if you just pick an arbitrary X on L, then it may happen that your N gamma, the N gamma is reducible. Um, and so it, it gives rise to more than the one component. Okay, let's see. Um, so that this is still still quite of, of the elementary part. Uh, so actually, NL gamma is defined by holomorphic e equations. You can also more or less identify them. There are eight k minus one k plus one of those holomorphic equations. Uh, in this way, you can define an, an, an analytic scheme structure on it. So it's not only a set. You can you have extra structure. Um, and analytic schemes can be badly behaved as as a base schemes can be. And since the not less is those locus have or the hot close side have something to do with um the deformation theory, Hilbert schemes, you might also expect quite a lot of pathologies uh, and it happens. So you, a component may be not reduced, it may have abandoned components, uh, everything of this type can can, can happen. Um uh, okay, maybe just uh, one remark. That uh, it is uh, in general, it is defined by more equations, but this number of hk minus one plus plus one contribute to tangent to space. And for higher, if it is not surface for them, there are other equations which are not, uh, they do not have linear part. There's a, uh, there's a theorem of Claire Fosen who says that this is the number of equations. Yeah, but there, uh, you need also the smaller, the other Hodge numbers. So there are more, more equations actually. Or, uh, maybe we can discuss later this one. Yeah, I, just, no, no, but I, I know that a priori you have more equations, but I, 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 I recall this theorem you know, of, of what Sam says that this, this number of equations is enough. Okay. Um, good. Based on the number of, um, the, if, the, if those equations are, um, If these equations are independent, you will call a, a component general. 
and otherwise you call it special. Um, and now the in the service case, where things are a little bit easier, um, we know quite a, quite a lot of this. So the, um, the the component of surfaces containing a line has called dimension g minus three. Um, and now the h zero two is d minus one, d minus two, d minus three over six. And so this is a much bigger number. Um, and then uh, for d at least at least five, uh, you will see that, that, that this component is a special component. Good. Uh, so this is the one. Um, so now a classical result by by Vosen and Green is that the um, largest component of um, of this of this hot flow locus in, in the surface case has collimation d minus three, and this are parameterizes a surface containing a line. And then the next largest one is the one parameterizing surface containing a conic. And then also the, then you get into a problem. So these are the two things you can easily show, and then, then life gets harder. You can generalize this even in, in higher dimension, then the largest component is precisely the ones that uh, parameterize uh, hypersurfaces containing linear space. Um, also, if you go further, it, it, it's getting getting a little bit, bit more tricky. But, um, so why want to emphasize so much on, on this green for then result. So if you go on, uh, then you will find infinitely many components whose tension space has co-dimension 2D minus 5. However, we know that only the only, the only component which has co-dimension 2D minus 5 is the one parameterized in service containing a conic. So all those others, they have um, they have to be non-reduced. Uh, and so they exist infinitely many non-reduced components of co-dimension 2D minus 6. Um, but if you then just look to the underlying variety, uh, then you'll see that this is just the, the locus of surfaces containing two lines which intersect. So as a, say, as a point set, there's only one such component, but as uh, a component of the node left flow side, there are infinitely many non-reduced ones. Okay. And now this, um, motivates it a little bit to not only to look to the host localized locus of one um, of one class but also of more than one classes and start comparing them so good so let's do it so if i take um if i take uh more than one class now then i can look to the locus where they, they all uh, but they all remain of the KK. And this is given by R times as much equations. So if you would start with two general components and then you look to this iterated, iterated host locus, then typically you will have this, this much smaller than the, than the host locus of combination of the two classes. Good. Um, so and host locus of a class is always the same as the multiple of a class. So I always assume that the, the, the coefficient in front of the gamma one is a one to ease up a little bit of the notation. So you will always, always write gamma one plus double gamma two just for, for simplicity. And what happens now if you took, if you took, take two classes where the corresponding host locus um, um, has very small dimension. Then typically there's a lot of geometry playing in the background, uh, and it might now occur that the host locus, the locus where all where the discrimination of the of the two classes remains of type KK is precisely the locus where both of these classes remain of remain of type KK. Good. So this is, um, I think, a priori you would already feel that this is not a special situation. You you will not have to have this that often, but uh, it may occur. Okay, um, we now go to specialize a little bit more. So rather than taking arbitrary classes, we take now two, two k planes in P2k plus one. 
And we let's see the video call dimension of the intersection. OK. Um, now, this iterated host locus, you can easily calculate the tension space, uh, calculate its dimension, and then you see it's, it's smooth everywhere. Okay. However, the host locus of the combination of the two planes is much harder to study. And so Hossein did a lot of calculations for the Fermat hypersurface uh, in the B3 and 4. Um, these are computer computations, so you cannot let your K grow too much. Uh, so he went to K6 or 7, I guess, but it was even quite big. But uh, those computations take too much time if you take K too big. And the, the Fermat variety has a lot of planes. Um, so you have also to, to make some, some assumptions on which planes you take. And then for certain phase of C, CDK, um, you will you will see that the tension space at the Fermat point is different from the for the iterated locus and locus of the of the of a combination of classes, and gives this difference there for almost all all lapa. And now the, the question is then: Can you can we explain this? Is there a reason for this for this difference? And so the Hossein's conjecture was that uh, if you take cubic hypersurfaces containing two k-planes and they intersect in dimension three, then for all non-zero lambda, there will be a difference of one between the dimension of the iterated Hartz locus and the, the combination of the of the two classes. Okay. Now, for obvious reasons, this reason this this, this statement cannot hold for case one. Uh, the case one is the cubic surface case. Um, we are we exclude this a priori, so that's, that's not an issue. And for case two, the cubic fourfold case, um, there you have that the period map is an isomorphism, and then you know that uh, all hot flows I have color dimension one, and all iterated hot flows I have two classes have color dimension two, so that that's fine. Um, and also this difference, it's precisely the difference in dimension of tension spaces, so it, it, it is a good. It's a good starting point. Okay, I will come back to this conjecture later on, um, but I will make all of one one thing now say clear from the start. So, after everything I will say about the qubit hyperservice case uh, requires k at least five. So I cannot say anything about k is three, k is four. Uh, there will no no statement of that, but everything everything will be for k at least five in in, in the qubit hyperservice case. However, what we're going to do um, does not only apply to cubic hypersurfaces. It, it's a strategy that works for many choices of KDC. So there's no uh, reason to say to stick only to this conjecture. So we will consider the, the following two questions. Um, so you fix all your invariance, so the dimension, the degree, the co dimension of the intersection of the planes, and the the lambda, the combination of the two classes you take. You now, first of all, you can ask whether there exists an X such that both host laws are coincide. Um, if not, it may be the case that the iterated host locus, no, the iterated host locus is always smooth. It may be the case that the, um, that the combination, and for some reason, has an as a reducible hot locus, or kind of that happened in a surface case, and then you can then you can ask whether maybe the underlying reduced scheme is the same. Um, if you find one example, then this is also also true and open, so it's some sort of of, of linear statement. You can also ask for, ask for whether this holds not only for for a linear one but for every hypersurface. Okay. So that are the basically the four questions. So the question is whether it holds true on an open or everywhere, and whether it holds holds for the scheme for only for the, the for the underlying uh, reduced scheme. Okay. Um, so we have some results on this, but I have to first make some comments. So to these questions, you can answer no for all of them. Uh, if you take D is three and K is two, or D is four and K is one, because the, the period map is an isomorphism, and the co-dimension of the host low, low side is just a number of uh, independent host classes you take, so that, that one is very easy. Also, if you take C is one and lambda is one, 
uh, they are they, they encounter a very well known degeneration. So um, the two planes they are just the limit uh, limit of a, fa a family of quadrics. Uh, and so you are on the boundary of the of the of the hot locus of um, of hypersurfaces containing a quadric. So in all those cases, the answer to the four four questions is no. Um, so now we are going a bit uh, say exclude these and go go a little bit further. Um, and now the results they come in in three parts. So the first one is when C minus one, D minus two is at least two. Uh, this, this happens most of the time. Uh, in that case, you have that the uh, iterated host locus and the linear combination of the host locus and linear combination, they are the same everywhere and for all lambda except for lambda zero. Um, Roberto proved this already in the in the neighborhood of the Fermat hyperservice. Um, so the, the real new contribution is that, that we know that this is true everywhere. Uh, but it also explains a bit, a bit of the picture. So in this case, um, in this case, you have always equality of the host locus. And now you are left with two types of cases. So the first one um, is when C is one. So when the color dimension is one, that we will treat separately and then yeah you have three isolated uh, pairs so the degree is three and the dimension is two the degree is three the dimension is three which is Hossein's uh, conditional case and the case d is four and the dimension is two okay um so what, what happens there so if if you are in in the cases where uh in in those three Isolated cases, you can show the following result. You can find a, a finite set such that for all lambda outside this finite set, and for a general X, you have equality of the host loci. Um, for that, you have to make some assumptions on your K. So, um, if you have, if you're in, in, the, in the two cases where you have cubics. You have to work with uh, to start working in dimension ten, and if you do degree four, then you have to start to work in dimension four. So this is a small price you have to pay here. Um, then let's see, and then you can also bound the number of elements in S. Um, and so in, in in two cases, so when D is three and C is three, and when D is four and C is two, they can then S consists of, of only one element. So we, we first you show that it has the most one element, and for that one element, you can even find an, an, an example. Um, however, in the case where D is three and C is two, uh, we cannot really control the set S. Good. So this is the this is what happens in generally. However, we know that um, for the Fermat hyperservice, there's a difference in, in tension spaces. And so for a, there's a class of, of hyperservices, which we call a split type. And there, um, what you see is that the, you know, the left of the, the host locus is reducible. So it has two, two, redu two reducible components. One is the iterated host locus. And there's another one which moves away from, from the iterated host locus. So then, if it's a split, or split type, the, the host locus is uh, singular. And it also explains why you have a bigger tension dimension. Uh, I reckon just one question. Uh, if, uh, yeah. uh, are these components themselves is this, are they smooth? Or you... the, Let's see the um, the the iterated host locus is smooth everywhere. So that one is that one is smooth. The other one is probably also smooth, but I uh, we did uh, I didn't check that. So okay. Um, good. And then uh, the last one is the case where you see is one. So this includes also Ananios result uh, if you take case one. Um. 
if C is one and K is at least two, again, you have a similar situation. So generically, you have that the iterated host locus and the uh, host locus of the combination coincides. Um, again, for these three, four, five, you need to have some small assumptions on your K. Um, and for DS6, you don't have any assumptions except for, for K at least two. Um, and if these are at least six, you can even do this in a way that, that your S, your set of, of that lambda is, is consists of one element. Okay. Um, again, here you have that um, if you have split type, then again, you have something, you have some, some, some reducibility, as, 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 at least as a scheme. However, um, my private opinion is, is that, that what, what's happening here is that um, as a scheme is reducible, um, but the only things I could say construct myself uh, are tangent factors, but it doesn't really uh, contribute to, to an extra component of the scheme. It, 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 it is an embedded component of this, um, of this locus. Um, I cannot prove that, that, that there's nothing else, but I, I strongly believe that it has an embedded component and nothing else. And so if you then take the underlying reduced scheme, then it's precisely the again the iterated uh, the iterated host locus. Okay. Um, so this is these are the results. They are um, so five theorems, and it covers a lot of uh, of things I said in the beginning. How can you attack this? Um, and how can you attack this? This quite different results. Uh, um, I want say to spend some time on that. that is, um, it, ha it has several ingredients. I want to spend now some time on that. Um, so I got into this because Hostein was uh, working so much on this, and he starts start to have a lot of conjectures and, and, and papers on it. And also, I discussed with this um, in the past with Roberto, and now also with my Roberto and, and, and Jorga there were here. We had some discussion about this, and they you all had a lot of. Uh, calculations at the Fermat hyperservice and also went much further than we did in the past because you could do some higher order approximations. Um, what um, I do differently from, from this uh, is that I go back in time, I do what we did in the 90s and around 2000. Uh, I'm studying the detention space of the host locus, uh, but I do this at the general point and not at the Fermat hyperservice. And then there, um, if you want to prove equality for the iterated host locus and the host locus of the combination of classes, um, it turns out that it suffices to do this for the tension spaces, uh, and they have enough because the iterated host locus is always contained in the host locus of the combination. And, uh, and the uh, iterated host locus itself is smooth. So this equality of, of tension space forces the, um, the host locus of the combination to be smooth and of the same dimension. And they, they get local inequality and, and we are fine. Um, so how do we now prove equality of tension spaces? That is the big thing. So that you, it uses two things. The one thing is the Athenian Bornstein algebra associated to an Hodge class. This thing is also been classically there, there for almost 20 years. Um, and what's different, I think, with this then not used so much is I used uh, some results from the theory of, of pencils of, of bearings. Um, also, this theory itself is not new. Um, if you look into linear algebra books from the, from the 50s, 60s, you will see chapters on, on pencils of pairings. And they make classifications, they, they prove a lot of results. Um, but nowadays, if it is linear algebra to our students, we probably ignore this, this theory and you will not find it in modern textbooks. Um, except what I discovered recently is that people in numerical analysis are very fond of it. Um, but you will not see this in, in many, in, you will not see this in many algebraic texts anymore. Um, also, which is quite uh, quite relevant for, for this, um, this approach, it does not work if your D, the degree, is bigger than K times D minus 2K minus 2. 
Now, most results about host loss ID are done in the surface case, in the case K is one. Uh, and then this equality, this inequality holds always. So in, for K is one, for the, for the surface case, I cannot say anything with this method. Um, but if starting from dimension two, you can get, get results. Well, from dimension four, from K is two. Okay. Um, let's see. So I want to go uh, a little bit in in detail. Um, so the Athenian goals and algebra. So you, most of you have seen this before. So you take um, you take a non-zero Hodge class, and now if you forget about uh, quartics, where some some stuff with three surfaces pops up, but in any in every other case, you can just describe the tension space um, to the host locus as all elements in H1 of the tension bundle, so that when you cut it with HK plus one, HK minus one, you end up in the orthogonal complement with respect to the cut product of, of this class gamma. And now the good thing is that everything which is on this line can be translated in commutative algebra and then you can use commutative algebra. So you take the, the polynomial defining your hyperservers, you take all your all partial derivatives, then you get the Jacobian ring, or the Jacobian ideal, and then you from about get the Jacobian ring. And now H1 of the tension space is just the degree D part of the Jacobian ring. So that is the first place, the first thing you can uh, replace by commutative algebra. And um, you can replace the KK part of your cohomology um, with the degree K plus one times d minus two part of the Jacobian ring. This is, um, this is due to a result by Griffiths from the from the 50s, I guess. Um, um, yeah. And so if, if you have your host class, you can now map this to the, the Jacobian ring and you get, so you, you can associate a polynomial with it. And the second good thing here is that the, the cut product is just a multiplication map. So I can just take um, take this as a polynomial of, um, I can just, just take this as, now as, as a part of polynomials and then you end up in the, in the top degree of the Jacobian ring and this is isomorphic with, uh, with C. Um, so if you, if you do it like I write, write it here, then you have you made some choices of isomorphisms in with C, so this is not, not precisely correct, but it is, it, everything is true to a universal scalar. Good. So how can I now get an, an, an algebra from this? I take, um, I take my class. It was an element of the degree k plus one times d minus two part of my Jacobian ring. And now under the product map, I want, want I want to take everything which is which has product zero with this. That gives me a color dimension one subspace. And now you can take the largest ideal in the Jacobian ring, such that the degree k plus one d minus two part is precisely this vector space. And in this way, um, you get an ideal. And which you now can show quite easily is that it is uh, it is Athenian, so it um, it is a zero-dimensional ring. It's Gorenstein; it has some pairing, and say the top degree where something is happening is k minus one d minus two. And also by the way we constructed this, the co-dimension of the tension space of the host locus is precisely uh, the dimension of the quotient ring in the degree d. Okay, and um, in general, it's not easy to find this algebra. However, if you take a class, uh, and this is a class of a complete intersection, so of a complete intersection in P two K plus one, so it's given by K plus one polynomials, and um, then I can then my the finding polynomial is just a combination of those k plus one polynomials with k plus one other polynomials. And the ideal generating is this, this 
uh, I think worse than algebra is are just the two k plus two polynomials you you used in this the definition of f. Okay. Let's see. Um, so this gives you the algebra. You can construct it in also in different ways, but this is one way of of, of getting this algebra. What happens now if you take uh, the higher hot loci? So the co-dimension of this iterated hot locus is just the dimension of the quotient ring. We now take the intersection of, of both ideals you constructed. So the idea you constructed for pi one and the idea you constructed for pi two. Um, and you do this in degree D. Um, However, if you consider this, this ring where you insect I1 and I2, it's still a zero dimensional ring. So if your degree is big enough, then the weighted part is zero. But the top degree, the top degree part now has dimension two rather than one. And now if I pick uh, a lambda, so I pick a combination of the two classes, then I need to have dimension one in the, in the top degree. So I need to mod out by at least one extra polynomial. And I call this extra polynomial d lambda. Okay. And now you can consider the difference between the tension space of the combination of the of the classes and the tension space of the iterated hot locus. And this is then precisely the left kernel of the multiplication map you see down there. So you now take the intersection of the of the ideals a degree d and, and you multiply this by k d minus two k minus two. Um, and then, then the, the part here you see is uh, on, on the right hand side is two dimensional, and you want out by d lambda, so we get something one dimensional, and then they have a pairing again. Um, unfortunately, if you write it in this way, you, you cannot prove a lot, uh, and it's very hard to figure out what, what, what d lambda is. Um, and so, what's now the idea? The idea is now to try to write this down as a pencil of parents and then use use just some, some general theory. Um, so what you can do is you go back to the the parents which you have with the uh, with i1 and i2 with ideals coming from the planes uh, both of them give you this this Athenian Gorenstein algebra so they both come with, with the pairing uh, and now you can lift these pairings without any any trouble to the intersection of uh, of I1 and I2. So you pick now this, 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 this you question out by a smaller ideal, uh, but you can, you can easily extend the parents to, to, to this case. And now the, the claim is um, that you can find a function such that um, the quotient of the two tension spaces is precisely the left kernel of uh, the first per, per, the first pairing plus a multiple of the second pairing, uh, and in this way you have um, you have written the pairings as a, as a combination of, 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 of yes, the pairing you want to consider as a combination of the two pairings. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, so how does this work in in, in practice? Um, so in, in, in the first case we did, so C minus one, D minus two, beginning two, we want to show that the iterated host locus and the, the host locus of the combination is the same for all non zero lambda. Uh, so what happens here, um, it's a bit of a special case, so if you look to the sum of the ideas associated with the both host classes, then in degree D, you will find that, that you have the whole ring already. Uh, this should be an R, I'm sorry. Um, and if you now write out the, the pairing, you can find basis for the for the two factors. Um, such that the, the, the matrix of this pairing is just uh, it has it's a block matrix, and the first block A it's um, it's a matrix with, with constant entries and non-zero determinants, and secondly you have a second block the matrix B, which is also square. It has also constant entries and non-zero determinants, but here you get them. The factor of new lambda in front of the b. 
Now this matrix is, is square itself and it has also a non-zero determinant unless new lambda is zero, but new lambda is zero corresponds to lambda is zero. Yeah, Renke, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. In your notation, S is what? S is, in, S is the type of should be R. Is what? Sorry. R. So, so the ring, R. Ah, it's R. It's R. Okay, okay. Yeah. So there was a, a typo, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, so in this case, you have a square matrix and not zero. Um, so you have a second type. Uh, so you have, you have no left kernel unless not is zero, but that, 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 that's a different story. Good. So that's, um, that's the first one. If you now go to the middle case where C minus one, D minus two is one or two, so these are the, the three cases with C is with D is three and D is four. And then we wanted to show that for a general X, uh, there is an um, the host lo locus um, of the combination of the classes is the same as the iterated host locus. Um, and in this case, you have to set S, so you, you might have some, some values of, you, you might need to exclude some values of lambda. Um, and moreover, we know that, that if we go to a special one to the split type, we should have an, uh, a reducible host locus. So here there is much more to, to prove. Um, here also, the, the, this theory, so in, in the previous case, we had this, this break that we could just write down basically the, the matrix. Here you cannot hope for something like this. It's more enforced. Um, and what we do instead is that you can find a criterion um, to show that the left kernel of this combination is zero for all but finitely many one. Um, and for that, I need to calculate some, and I only need to consider the sum of the two ideas, I1 and I2, modulo I1, uh, and consider the induced pairing here. Um, the big advantage here is that there's no lambda flowing around, uh, and that makes this, this type of calculations much, much, much simpler, much faster. And also, the ideal i1 and i1 plus i2 they are much simpler than. So here in the previous case, you were considering uh, i1 intersected with i2. Uh, i1 intersected with i2 is much more complicated ideal than i1 plus i2 or or i1. Um, so here you have to just to calculate this the, the pairing on the on, on, on these ideals. Um and I have to check whether there's a left kernel, yes or no. Um moreover, what you can show here is that if if you are in the case where C minus one, D minus two is two, so that are the cases uh three, three and four, two, and then there's at most one value of lambda where there can be a kernel. So that gives you already a limitation. Still, what is not so clear a priori, so we want to, pr to produce one example, um, but you have to produce an example for every C, D, and, and K. Now C and D, there are only finitely many choices. For K, there, there are infinitely many choices. What you can do is find one minimal example, and then you can show that for all K bigger than this minimal K, uh, has also a, a pairing of this type. And now you can um, start writing down the example. So let's start with C is two and D is four. Uh, we still find an example. We know that Fermat doesn't work. Uh, on the other hand, we want to calculate things with the computer. So we should have an, a simple polynomial, not, not too many monomials, not too many big numbers. Um, so after some tries, I came with the following polynomial. It's a polynomial which has, um, it's in eight variables, and it has 10 monomials. Uh, so if you want to have a smooth hyperservice, you need at least eight monomials. Um, so this has 10, so it's pretty close to being uh, to the minimum. In this case, you can easily calculate this pairing on uh, on this vector space in the re, in the re four. And you can show that it has no left kernel. Uh, and then you have your example for k is three. And you can show that if I, if you keep on adding four powers of coordinates, then also in all in every higher dimension, um, this pairing has no left kernel, so you're fine. 
So Ramke, what, what are the equations of the subvarieties here? So the, the one, so here in the second, second, at the second point, you have a polynomial in seven from in x zero to x seven. That one is giving you the example uh, for case three. So for the six fold case. Yeah, yeah, but, but I'm asking about the, the, the equations of the linear subspaces. Yeah, so that, that's so I'm I'm sitting here with it. So um the one is x zero is x one is x six is x seven. And all the ones x two is x three is x seven, x x equals x seven. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. um, this one, so it, it's a better example in the sense that it has more, it has even more planes than than, than those ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so this one's for C is two and, and D is four. If you go for C is three and D is three, so the one that uh, is a counter example to Hossein's conjecture in dimension 10, uh, if you can do something like this, so you define QIs and PIs, and then, then then you add it up. And again, you you from from say from X12 onwards, you just put put cubes. Um, okay. Here, the story is very similar to the one uh, to the one before. And then finally, for CS2 and these three, you can also find uh, um, a sample of this type. And um, all these examples, they are quite sparse, spa, so it, it, it's very easy to, to calculate with them. Okay. Then, um, what remains, oh yeah, so what, what now remains is you want to know the number of bad letters. And so in, in, in two, so you have three, you're basically covering here three cases. Um, but in, in two cases, you have C minus one, D minus two equals two, and then we know that the number of bad lambda is at most one. Um, and now you can even show that for this bad lambda, the difference can be at least uh, at least one, or at most one, so you, it's either the same or there's a difference of one. And now actually, you can just write down explicit examples to show that the, the hot locus of the combination is bigger than the iterated hot locus. And for this, you go back to the to, very, to the smallest scale possible. So, um, for example, in the, in the, in the cubic fourfold case, you know that a cubic fourfold containing two disjoint planes is on the boundary of the space of cubic fourfolds containing a quartic scroll, and it's on the boundary of the space containing quintic scrolls. Um, now, if you want to go to a higher dimension, then this, all, this result of the quartics cross doesn't generalize, but the one of the printings does. And so if you have a um, cubic hyperservice containing two planes in a setting in co-dimension three, then it's the limit um, of a family of um, cubic hypersurfaces containing a cone of the Tucker embedding of D25. So D to five is in degree five sub scheme, so it's, it, it has the good degree, um, and so 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 in, in that way you can show that that for at least one value of lambda there's a difference, and in degree four you use um, a similar result about about K three surfaces. Okay, good. Um, then we are left with one case. This case C is one, the case where. If for case one, I knew that there's a lot of work. Um, here again, you have to show that generic of that, that generically you have equality of hot slows I, uh, and you have something special happen, happening on a split uh, at the split type. Uh, now for small degrees, so three, four, five, you basically copy the strategy before. You write down a good polynomial, and you compute with the computer. And it tells you that, that there's no left kernel, so you so you're happy. Um, so this is fine as long as your degree is at most five. Uh, however, if you want to go beyond this, um, all those computer programs that calculate, you know, they need they need to know your d. So then you need to fix your d, and we need to. In this case, we have infinitely many possibilities for d. 
So what I did there is I wrote, I think the most simplest thing I could think of, which was not Fermat, and try to work out the pairing completely by hand um, as a function of lambda. And here I got lucky in the sense that I could uh, find a good basis for both spaces, so the pairing of two spaces, so I could find a, base, a good basis for both of them. Uh, and now the, if they write out the matrix of this pairing, it, had, it has blocks of four different types. So one is one, the other one is just entry new lambda, then you have a one by two block, one new lambda, and then you have a certain three times three block. Uh, and this, so this this um, this matrix it has zero columns, but it doesn't have zero rows. It's not a square matrix, but uh, it doesn't have zero rows. Um, and so it has maximal row rank as long as new lambda is non-zero, and as long as this three by three matrix doesn't have zero determinants. And now you can work out, uh, you can work this out. So the only for, let's see, I think for new lambda is minus one, if new lambda is zero, you will get uh, zero determinant. And otherwise you will always have, you always will have uh, full ring. Okay. Good, so I'm probably a little bit too fast, but I want I want to conclude with some some more general comments. So this idea of using parents, when can you apply this this, this this more? So we use this to show that the iterated hot locus is the same as the hot locus of the combination of two classes. Um, one very important thing in this is it, it only works if your degree is at most a kd minus two k minus two. And that means in practice that you have to assume that k is at least two, so that you are working with four faults of dimension big or, or bigger dimension. And your degree has to be at least two plus four over k minus one. So from D starting from six, there's nothing, there's no, there's no problem from starting from k is two, but for the smaller degrees, three, four, and five, you have to even to take your k bigger. The second thing that is very important for the for this is that, um, the iterated host logo should be smooth. And you can calculate, you can check this probably in many examples. So if you take gamma one and gamma two, uh, complete intersection class, uh, complete intersection cycles, in many instances, you can show that this iterated host logo is smooth. Um, if it is smooth and the sum of the ideals is everything, uh, so here again an S that should be an R, um, then you have equality of host loci everywhere. Um, so th we had this in the, in the linear spaces case, uh, this condition that the sum of the two ideas is everything. It was equivalent with C minus one, D minus two, at most two, or at least two. If you take arbitrary complete and section cycles, it's happening a, le a little less frequently, but it still happens. And then you have a quite easy way to prove that the two hot slows are the, are the same. Um, if the iterated host locus is smooth, um, but you don't have this equality, then um, you have to produce one example. And so as soon as you have one example, then you have some, some generic equality. And the only thing I want to say here is that uh, this method is of no use in the thing we spend so, so much time on. So in the case of not left side, low side of surfaces, you cannot say anything. Good. So, Thank you for your attention. And I'm sorry I went probably a little bit too fast, but uh, I'm happy to answer more questions. Okay. So are there questions? <laughs>